we could all rise for the pledge, please. <coughs> Doug, can you lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. A moment of silence for the men and women in the armed forces, our veterans, our first responders, and those fighting the good fight, and also for those two brave Bristol police officers that have passed. May their memories be eternal. Thank you. Is there any nominations for a moderator? Nominate Mayor Bass. Second. Second. Congratulations, Mayor Bass. You are the moderator. Thank you. And uh, we'd like to read the uh, notice of the special town meeting, October 21st, 2022. Those qualified to vote in town meetings in the town of New Milford are hereby warned and notified to meet at the New Milford Town Hall, 10 Main Street, New Milford, Connecticut, on October 24th, 2022, at 6.45 p.m. in the E. Paul Martin room for the following purpose to wit, to consider and act upon the following question. Shall the Town of New Milford expend COVID Relief American Rescue Plan Act funds received from the United States Treasuries as follows. Veterans Medical Equipment, $17,500. Copies of, this, of the said proposed expenditures are on file and available for public inspection at the office of the New Milford Town Clerk, dated New Milford, Connecticut, this 14th day of October, 2022, as authorized by the Town Council. Do we have anybody, uh, Sal, that would like to speak on behalf of this proposal? Nobody wants to speak from the Arnold House. We have nobody? Okay. Any council members have questions concerning the appropriation? Okay. I'd like to entertain a motion to accept the use of American Relief Funds in the amount of $17,500 for veterans' medical equipment. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That's for the audience, too. You're, you're allowed to vote. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you, everybody. I'd like to adjourn this special uh, meeting. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. And our regular meeting is going to be at 7 p.m. Thank you, everyone.
have anyone on the phone? Okay, I don't have anybody yet. It's already, it's already in, so. Okay, if we could all rise for the pledge, please. Sal, can you lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. A moment of silence for our men and women in the armed forces, our veterans, our first responders, those brave men and women fighting the good fight in the Ukraine, and the two officers from Bristol that their lives have passed. May their memories be eternal. Thank you. And if we could still keep standing, I'd ask the council, which is on your uh, agenda, to read with me. This is the reciting of the American Creed by William Tyler Page. <clears throat> I believe in the United, United States, States of America, of America as a government of the people, people, by the people, for the people, whose just powers are derived from the consent of the government, a democracy and a republic, a sovereign nation of many sovereign states, a perfect union, one and inseparable, established upon those principles of freedom, equality, justice, and humanity for which American patriots sacrifice their lives and fortune. I therefore believe it is my duty to my country to love it, to support its constitution, to obey its laws, to respect its flag, and defend it against all enemies. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Katie? Do we have any public comment, Mayor? Sal? Uh, we have uh, Mr. Allister. Good evening, Chief. Mayor, Town Council. Um, I came to, I'm Kurt Alcesser, um, the Fire Chief of Waterwitch Fire Department. Can you state your address as well, please? Excuse me? Your address as well, please, Kurt. I'm sorry. Address, oh, my, a my address, a home address? Yes. 45 Bear Hill Road in New Milford. Um, I came, came to here to talk to you guys um, and explain what Waterwitch has achieved this year. Um, and we wa I wanted to thank you guys for letting us achieve this. Um, as of 10-19-2022, we've had already had 520 calls this year. Um, that's 35 more calls than average, so it's going to be a high call volume this year. We also have four probationary members coming off their probation this year, and I go to other chief's meetings throughout the state and getting members to join is a very difficult thing to do. And I'm very proud that we have four members coming off and we also have three coming in. So recruitment is doing very well for us. Um, I think it's because we are this active and we see a lot of incidents. We see uh, water rescue, car accidents, structure fires. Um, we're very active in rope rescue. So Lots of training, and I think that's what draws the younger members to come in and join Waterwitch. <clears throat> We've also received um, just recently a $131,000 FEMA grant for uh, exhaust capture system for both our fire stations. So our members will not breathe in the cancerous causing fumes from our diesel vehicles and our cars. So we're very proud of that. We're hoping to have that installed by next summer. <clears throat> All of our ARPA funds, um, everything that we asked for has been purchased. Um, we still have one airbag still in order, um, but everything else is in service and ready for the community. <clears throat> we just recently take in um, our new rescue. I don't know, we, we had it out for fire prevention weekend last weekend. It was a big hit. I think everybody liked it. Thank you, Mayor, for coming out. Um, it's a Freightliner walk around, 2022. It took uh, almost three years to get that because uh, all the back orders on everything nowadays with the COVID. And we just uh, today received a new utility 
for um, all our rope rescues and our boats. It's a Ford 350. And we've also purchased um, a new brush truck, which still hasn't come in yet. It should be in November. Um, and we were allotted um, 140000 out of the uh, capital out of that. And we are actually going to give back $12,000 back into that um, fund for the next vehicle being purchased. Um, we have members currently involved in classes across the region, which is Fire 1, Fire 2. Um, they're about a 12-week class, uh, two, two days a week, so there's a lot of, lot of time training. And um, we have constantly training and uh, weekend seminars to advance our training and knowledge to the service. We're also proud to report that our ISO um, rating finally came in. I don't know if everybody saw that, but we were a four, and now with all our training records and our new computer system, our ESO, we are able to bring up our records and show our training and how um, all three fire departments actually work together. And so that brought it down to a slee, three slash three Y, which means savings to commercial business on their insurance and some of the residents in that area, in the um, hydrant area. So I want to um, thank you guys all again the continued support of Water Witch Fire Department, and that's why I'm here today. Um, I kind of wanted to get here sooner, kind of like halfway point, so you can see how we're doing. But busy summer this year, and this is my first year as chief, so trying to get the hang of it. So, but I want to thank you guys again for all, all, all your support. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Chief. Thank, thank you, you Chief. Chief. Please thank everyone at the firehouse. Thank you, Chief. Mr. Bob Brecken. Bob Greco, 12 Sand Road. Good evening, town council members. Um, as a finance officer of uh, Ezra Woods Post 31 American Legion, I would just like to take this time to uh, thank the town council and the town for approving our ARPA funds. The $17,500 is perfect for what we need for the medical equipment for those veterans in need. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Bob. I have someone, well, I cannot read the name, from 10 Chinook Lane. Uh, maybe I couldn't read it. I apologize. Are you, is that you? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, hi. A new sign is coming to town. Hey, Janet, can you just state your address, please? Oh, I'm sorry. Janet Parsons, 10 Chinmoy Lane. Okay. Yes, this new sign that's coming to town is sponsored by the Garden Club of New Milford. You can see the support that we have tonight. Um, it is a project that started with the Federation Clubs nationally back in 1945. There are Blue Star Highway markers scattered in all of our 50 states. Ours is on a 95, bridging Connecticut into Rhode Island. The project expanded to Blue Star Memorial Marker so more communities could participate. And the, this is the sign that we want to bring to New Milford. Mm -hmm. If you want to see an actual sign, one is located in Bridgewater near the Burnham School, and the other one is in Brookfield um, and near the um, park and across from the library, Williams Park. Uh, and those two signs exemplify exactly what we're going to be bringing to New Milford. The sign honors all veterans who have served in all wars or conflicts in our past, present, or contemplate joining our armed forces in the future. Perhaps you've noticed the markings on the grass because the sign that we have located is going to be outside near Peter Orensky's memorial stone and plaque, and we're going to be tying those two together with landscaping. I'm grateful for the permission that the Garden Club has received, the encouragement from a Mayor Bass, zoning, public works, and HBI for approval of this sign. 
Funding for this project is completely going to be from the Garden Club. Our application has been accepted by the state and actually is on the way as I speak to National. And with their approval, it will go to be manufactured. That will not happen for a while. Very happy to report that when that sign is completed, Public Works will be housing it for us until we have a ceremony. We are hoping to have that ceremony. Flag Day 2023 It's going to be our part of our 100th anniversary for the Garden Club and it is our way to give back to the community. Thank you. Outstanding. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. Thank you. Garden Club. I do have pictures in case anybody would like to see them. Sure, thank you. Uh, Ms. Kathy Barringer. Hello. Um, Kathy Barringer, 32 Pleasant View. Um, I'm the president of the Garden Club. And um, first, before I begin, I'd like to thank Mike Boucher, Chuck Ballard, Dan Calhoun, and Mayor Bass for all their support. It's been inc incredible. Um, and as you've heard, it is our 100th anniversary in 2023. So we've got a lot of projects planned. And uh, Blue Star being our premier project, so to speak. But we have another one, and it is um, the Poppy Project. And um, this originated in um, Australia, this project, uh, for what they call Anzac Day. It's basically the Memorial Day. And how I found out about it is my sister happens to be living in Australia right now. And she was showing me these. Um, it's very high profile there. It's gone to the UK and now it's coming here. We are probably going to be one of the first towns in the United States to do this project though. I've looked online, I've seen maybe two or three. So I think we're going to um, be um, ahead of the game here. Um, it is a community project. Um, so we're asking community members to knit and crochet these poppies. Um, we're going to put them on sticks. They're going to be on the ground. So this is this is supposed to be representing the ground. Maybe my little brick here. <laughs> okay. So and I don't know that they'll be that close together. Um, we are going to be displaying them the week of Memorial Day in 2023. So it's a very large project. We're hoping to get a thousand poppies. So if you will, it's going to be in front of the All Veterans uh, on the ground in front of the All Veterans Memorial, and that is in front of the tank facing Bridge Street, that's the memorial. The, this side of it is the Vietnam and that side of it is all veterans. Um, so I think that this is going to be a visually stunning display and it'll be a reminder to all the uh, residents in New Milford, but I think a lot of people who drive through because they're gonna be able to see it in front of the all veterans and it, it'll be up for a whole week and then hopefully we'll be able to, you know, we don't really know because um, it's our inaug inaugural, um, project for this, but we're hoping to save these and then, you know, maybe rejuvenate them and bring them out every year. Now, currently, it is not a fundraiser for the veterans. Um, it is, um, it is the first time we're doing it. We didn't know exactly how to approach the whole thing because they're not buying the poppies. We want them in the ground. So, you know, so it's a sponsorship, so to say, so to speak. Um, Bob down at Recycling did um, offer to put up um, a sign for us similar to what he's doing in the luminaries and he is going to collect money for the veterans um, and he's going to advertise it for us. Um, and we will be having maybe some donation cans or, you know, spots, Memorial uh, Day Parade, but again, it's, the primary purpose is public awareness and to support our veterans and I think and bring some um, recognition to our veterans and to remind everybody that's what Memorial Day is about. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you Kathy. Ms. Julia Land. Kathy, thank you and all the Garden Club. The town looks absolutely beautiful. Absolutely. Thank you. Yep. Thank you guys. And no, one, and no one's touched anything. <laughs> yeah. Good. I mean, it's, it's a, a one, let me just tell you real quick. One morning we had covered them because we had frost and there was people wanted to take pictures. They uncovered them, took their pictures and covered the plants back up. So anyhow, all right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Julie Wyant. Um, I'm at 129 Prospect Hill Road. 
Um, this is my first time attending a town council meeting. Uh, and I'm here just to say how much I miss the library. Uh, I am a mom of six kids and I'm down to, uh, we homeschool and I'm down to my last child. She's a senior and she has been unable to use the library fully for two and a half years now. Um, I know this is probably not a Q&A, but I'm w wondering if there is a way to make that happen faster. Uh, I, I realize there's been issues, but, um, and I, I don't know them fully all, but uh, we really love our library and look forward to those doors opening again, hopefully very soon. Uh, someone today at the town hall told me it might be Christmas or after Christmas. Um, that's, it just seems really long. Uh, and I wanted to tell you how much we love the library and use the library. And I really look forward to bringing my grandkids there to Mrs. Ford's story time <laughs> uh, sometime soon. Uh, my oldest is 31, and uh, he went to her story time, and I really look forward to <laughs> that occurring. Um, and, and while these people are here, I want to say thanks for the Garden Club. You guys are awesome. Thank and thank you to Water, which we appreciate all thank you. you do. And thank you. All right, thanks. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. No more public participation, Maya. Thank you. Katie? Okay. <clears throat> item number four, I'd like to move that we approve item number four, A, B, and C. Second. Any discussion on the consent agenda? I'd just like Katie? to explain on behalf of the youth agency, the item four, C, which is uh, we're giving them the okay to accept a grant for $21,667 which was awarded by the Connecticut Youth Services Association and the Connecticut Court Support Services Division. The money is to be used in the region Danbury's local interagency uh, inter service teams. They call it LIST. And the youth agency will serve as the region's lead on the Youth Service Bureau uh, in the juvenile court catchment area. The awarded money will be deposited into an account recommended by the finance director. Is it the finance director of um, the youth agency or is, is what? I'm sorry. It would be you? Okay, and can you tell us which account or is that it not? Be, all I can tell you right now is that it would be in the grant fund and as we get new grants I assign project codes to them to track <laughs> expenditures and revenue by project. Thank you. Any other discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Any abstentions? Thank you. Uh, mayor's comments, item four. Thank you, Katie. First, I'd like to start and uh, ask uh, Mr. Healy and Mr. Boucher to come forward. This week, we're going to celebrate uh, National First Responders Day which is on October 28, 2022. There's an emphasis on our public works professionals. Whereas public works professionals focus on infrastructure, facilities, <coughs> emergency management, and services that are of vital importance to sustainable and resilient communities, and the public health, high quality of life, and well-being of people who love their family. And whereas these infrastructure, facilities, services should not be provided without dedicated efforts of public works professionals. For federally mandated first responders since 2003, and the engineers, managers, and employees of all levels of government and the private sector who are responsible for rebuilding, improving, and protecting our nation's transportation, water supply, water treatment, and solid waste systems, of our buildings and other structures and facilities essential for our citizens. And whereas it is a public interest for the citizens, civic leaders, and children of New Milford to gain knowledge and maintain ongoing interest and understanding of the importance of public works first responders and public works programs in their respective communities. And whereas the New England chapter of the American Public Works Association encourages all communities to participate in the National First Responder Day on October 28, 2022, and all citizens to take a moment to thank their public works professionals for their critical role in response and recovery during disasters. I've seen that firsthand too many times. 
Now, therefore, I, Pete Bass, Mayor of the Town of New Milford, do hereby designate October 28, 2022, as National First Responders Day. I urge all citizens to join with representatives of the American Public Works Association and government agencies in activities, events, and ceremonies designed to pay tribute to our public works professionals, engineers, managers, and employees, and to recognize the substantial contributions they make to protecting our national health, safety, and quality of life. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate it very much. Next, uh, some congratulations are in order. First to our New Milford High School men and women's cross country teams, as they both are SWC cross country champions. So outstanding, great job to uh, the coaching staff, uh, to Mr. Lipinski, the athletic director, uh, to our actual uh, students who did an absolutely fabulous job. Also want to congratulate the New Milford Bulls junior varsity cheer team as they place first in sideline cheer, and they will complete, compete at the regional championships in November. So outstanding for, for uh, our young Bulls teams. Uh, the junior Pee Wee team placed fourth, and their Tiny Mike team did a wonderful routine and had zero deductions on their, on their performance. So outstanding. Also want to congratulate the Milford High Marching Band and Color Guard as they, take, as they took time in abbreviated version, and I've seen it. Amazing, amazing work. I want to thank our Scattercook field hockey team as uh, they are 8-1 and one so far this season. Their last game is on Wednesday, so we wish them a lot of luck in their season. Congratulations uh, to them. And uh, also want to congratulate our uh, New Milford High School varsity field hockey team. Uh, they had a 2-1 win over Massac, and they are 10-2-3, and, and they're going to be in the playoffs as well. Also wanted to thank the New Milford Chamber. They had their gala, and uh, in their gala they awarded uh, two community members with awards versus Carmilla's Cupboard uh, and Diane Swanson of the Pratt Center. Both of those uh, individuals do tremendous work for our community, and uh, they were uh, awarded, uh, and a big thank you from the chamber, and I know we at the town council thank them for all that hard work as well. I want to thank all the first responders. Uh, I also want to thank Kevin for our fire prevention week. It capped off at Northville School. We had a bunch of the uh, emergency response vehicles there. Kids loved it. And uh, I know Kevin and Ed were at all the other schools talking about fire prevention uh, and the need to have a, have a plan, especially in your house. And uh, uh, Kevin has also been uh, very gracious, him and Ed, is if anybody needs a smoke detector, they will come to your house. They'll put it up for you. Right, Kevin? So thank you very much for that. I also want to uh, thank, um, uh, including in that, as uh, Principal Gallagher of Northville, Dr. Patty Foote, and Fred Gordon, uh, who's on DPW, but is also is a fireman. And he's the one that actually uh, puts this together uh, every year for fire prevention in Northville. Oh, nice. So yes, yeah, so very, we're very thankful uh, for that. Also, it's kind of a plug, if you're gonna be a first time home buyer, and you're interested in learning more about uh, getting qualified, which is a pretty lengthy process, or budgeting or whatnot, uh, the New Milford Housing Partnership, Newtown Savings Bank, uh, is going to do a first-time homebuyer workshop in partnership with Habitat for Humanity. And that's a Tuesday, tomorrow. It's from 6 to 7.30 p.m. at Pettibone. And it's a great chance uh, if you're looking to um, become a first-time homebuyer. This is a very important class. It's free. Uh, you can take it and you can learn a little more. So I hope uh, people will take uh, take uh, the uh, Housing Partnership, Newtown Savings Bank, and Habitat Humanities offer up. It's a great uh, product and a great program. Uh, as far as uh, things that are continuing on in New Milford, we still have a bunch of events uh, that are going on. Uh, on the 29th, uh, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. on the Southern Green, we're having Halloween on the Green and a costume parade. We started that costume parade uh, when COVID started. I want to thank Pat Hambrook. Get a lot of kids, and it's great to see the kids uh, lead the parade and go around the green. Uh, so thank you. Also on the 29th, 
from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. is Trunk or Treat. On November 4th, 6.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. at Pettibone is an evening with a medium. Uh, Jani, I'm going to mispronounce the last name, I apologize, Madeleme, for, and that's a New Milford grad party fundraiser. And for those that don't know, the grad party is essential in uh, helping keep kids uh, off of uh, other parties that they may want to go to uh, right after graduation. They can make it a very safe space uh, for our kids. So thank you very much for the many years they've been doing that. On November 5th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. on the green near the bandstand, Operation Thanksgiving Food Drive. That's sponsored by the Women's Club, the United Way, of, and the United Way of Western Connecticut. Also on November 5th, during the day at the Historical Society South Lawns, so that's right across the street from the northern one where the Lincoln Memorial is, is the Flags of Valor, and that's sponsored right. by the Kiwanis Club. So they'll be putting those up then. On November 6th, from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Pettibone, DC Publications and Connecticut Minuteman, that's Don Clady's doing his car show. On November 11th at 7 p.m. at the high school, varsity football game playing Joe Barlow. That'll be a very good game, two really good teams. <coughs> On November 18th from 6.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. at Pettibone is the Sip and Stroll, or I'm sorry, Sip and Shop, and that is uh, sponsored by the New Milford uh, <coughs> Townwide PTO, and that's to benefit the scholarships that the PTO gives out each year to uh, our scholars. On November 22nd, the Milford High School varsity football game playing uh, one of our arch rivals, right, Doug? New Fairfield. That'll be a great game. <coughs> November 26th, 5.30 p.m. on the green is annual tree lighting, and that kicks off uh, our <coughs> Christmas holiday season as well as our small business uh, shopping. Uh, on the December 2nd from 6 to 9 in downtown is the Sip and Stroll. On December 3rd, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Pettibone is the Women's Club Holiday Bazaar. December 17th, 4.30 p.m. to 7 p.m., Oddfellows is doing their roast beef supper. December 17th, 6 p.m. at the Bandstand is the annual carol scene. That's a wonderful opportunity for all of our residents that come to get together, mm -hmm. sing some wonderful songs. And then right after that, at 7 p.m. on the green is the Holiday Parade of Lights, the Water Witch puts out. It's great for our kids. Uh, and many, many trucks. I was talking with Sean. There's going to be even more than last year, and there was over 100 trucks last year. Uh, staying uh, on a couple things when it comes to uh, our roads and our bridges. Our road program uh, is actual road work. is almost completed. Uh, this year, we've done uh, Hine Road, Eleanor Drive, Twin Ridge, Twin Brooks, Violet Hill, Creamery, River Road, Squash Hollow, Twin Ridge. Uh, we're continuing to work on Mine Hill, um, Round Table Road, they're working on catch basins and grading. Uh, they've already paved that binder co course. Have they finished that up, Jack, do you know? Not yet. Okay. And uh, Mine Hill Road, uh, <laughs> they're completing the catch basins tops and grading there. And uh, we also uh, are going to be doing Tamarack Road, Jack, correct? Yes, we are. And uh, thank you to you guys for uh, putting on the skim coat for Cannonwood Lake Road North. I know the residents were very happy about that. We did have some... Uh, some major issues on some of that road now and that will be one that will be doing a full mill and pave in the fall correct jack in the spring yes in the spring i'm sorry uh next is uh bridges we're able to do four bridges this year we did tamarack bridge mud palm mud pond road bridge um we also did uh Chinierski bridge the temporary bridge and that's up and open uh and uh we've got some other bridges that we're working on upland road we're working on that bridge too correct jack yes and uh working with uh, the engineering on a wheaton road bridge we submitted that housatonic uh, avenue bridge uh is ai engineers is working on that one and as we've talked about before uh we have about is it 70 bridges jack yeah the, the official count is 70 according to the dot's <coughs> website so 70 bridges quite a bit and uh at least we got four done so far this year, and we're gonna talk more about our capital plan as we move more forward uh, in December and January. Uh, also wanna thank our facilities team for the wonderful job they're doing in all of our town buildings. Uh, can't thank them enough for that. Uh, also staying on a couple more infrastructure things, just mentioned here about the library. Uh, unfortunately, we thought we'd have the library open, but due to 
uh, shortages, especially in our lighting controls, which is much needed. Um, we just got the railings in just the other day for the front, which makes us ADA compliant. Uh, we're still waiting, as Katie knows, we're still waiting for some more of these materials to come in, and that's created this, this uh, delay. But we're not going to open the library until it's fully finished. And that is because we want to make sure with our $8.5 million investment, $6.5 million by town funds, $1 million by the state uh, historic property, and another million that was fully fundraised by our library board of trustees, who are fully in agreement that we're going to open this thing when it needs to be open, which we all would wish was today, but we want to make sure that it's all completed. Uh, and it is an absolutely beautiful state-of-the-art library. I do offer it's not a 100% solution, but as a solution, the library is open for curbside service. Mm -hmm. uh, you can call them. They can bring the books out to you. They also have electronic books that you can purchase. And they've also been doing a lot of programs outside of the library. Uh, right now, tentatively, we're looking a little bit after Christmas, which would be a nice gift to have it open. But right now, with these material shortages that everyone is feeling globally, um, some of these things we're just waiting for them to come in. Um, our, uh, we're continuing on with our uh, energy uh, project that's with the both the town, the Board of Education, and the ambulance, where we're taking the uh, requested uh, capital and we're using the energy savings that this new, this new uh, um, equipment that would come in, and that's what's going to uh, pay for the $15 million project. So, uh, still moving forward. And Jack, could you kind of give them an update of where we are so far? Um, we're, um, we're, we, just, we are currently installing a co-gen system at the high school. We put two, two new boilers at the high school. We have uh, solar panels going on Sarah Noble Intermediate School and Hill and Plain School. There'll be solar panels located behind the police department. If you see behind the police, you'll see where the hill was, uh, the trees were removed, there'll be solar panels put there. Um, we've, we've done lighting in almost all, in every school. Uh, we're do, doing the final audits on that. Um, they're also putting a new boiler into the, uh, into the Sarah Noble School, and we're planning for new cooling towers at the high school and, and Scatico School right now. Thank you, Jack. Also with the sidewalks, uh, we've gotten our grants from that those that will be around Pettibone and those will be coming down from Canterbury School, New Milford High School. We're continuing with that project. That was delayed due to COVID uh, with some of our uh, uh, engineering firms. And that, Jack, is gonna be what, next uh, July? Somewhere around there is when we're gonna be actually breaking ground on those? Yeah, we, we're finishing up the final plans right now and the anticipation is that we'll go out to bid so that the work will start after July 1st. And with the uh, approval of the Town Council Board of Finance and our uh, town meeting, we appropriated monies for the dam, Reservoir Number 4. I know we've put out the RFP for engineering, Jack. Yeah, that's, the RFP is due this Thursday. Um, I know we've had a lot of, a lot of hits on, on Procure Now, so I'm anticipating a, a good amount of, um, of interest in, in that. And the Public Works Department themselves have done a lot of work. Um, if you go to the dam, you'll see where a lot of the backside of the dam was cleared and, and uh, the, the, the swale was reinforced. And right now, Public Works will be installing new covers on the, uh, the, on the overflow weirs. Thank you, Jack. And as we all know, the, high, high, the uh, town hall roof has been completed, that project. We're just waiting for the reimbursement as we got a $100,000 grant from the historical preservation. So I know Tammy Reardon, our grant writer, is working on that to get that money back to us. And on the New Milford High School roof uh, project, as we all know, that was like in three phases. One was the immediate one, which was the restoration of uh, the school to allow the kids back in, and that was completed. The next portion was repairing the fire damaged portion of the roof. That was completed. And now we are on to completing the 40% left of the standing seam roof that's required. We have Greenwood Industries that's been on the roof. Jack, could you give the town council a little bit of an update on how that's going? That's going, well, it's going, on, they've, they've submitted a new schedule. Uh, we are working with them. The schedule is that they're anticipating being complete with the standing seam roof by uh, January. Uh, then they have the flat roofs. They can't do the flat roofs until the temperature warms up in the spring. So they will, they will leave and then come back once the temperature warms 
and then do the probably be a very short duration, a week or two here, do the flat roofs, and they'll be complete. Excellent. And then we'll have uh, that uh, completed. We're also uh, working with the Board of Ed uh, to marry our two uh, capital plans together for next year. Uh, we could, we're working on that, and once we get that together, we'll bring that to the Town Council, Board of Finance, and to the Board of Ed as well. Um, as this will be, we're trying to work globally rather than two different <coughs> silos, and we'll have more information to the Council as we move forward with that. And that's it, Katie. Oh, that's a lot. Thank you. Uh, item number five, I'd like to move uh, item 5A, B, A and B, uh, which are will cover appointments and reappointments. If you'd like me to read them all, or would you like to do them separately? You okay with one? Okay. All right, so there'll be the following. Uh, for a reappointment to the Housatonic Regional Resources Recovery Authority, Pete Bass, and Suzanne Von Holt, their term October 24th, 2022 through November 30th, 2023. Uh, an appointment of the, to the Ethics Commission would be for Vincent Delaney, term of October 24th, 2022 through November 30th, 2024. Appointment of Town Council Parliamentarian Chris Cosgrove, term to be October 24th, 2022 through November 30th, 2023. And to the Local Emergency Planning Committee, Jeff Edelstein, uh, term of 10 2022 October 24th, to November 30th, 2026. He's replacing Larry Gunnerman, and I'd like to say thank you to Larry for many years of being involved in that. Just as an aside, I see he's leaving. So there you go. We have a second. And any discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. Aye. Item number five, uh, road closures. I'd like to move that we approve item 5A, uh, which is the Bank Street Group requesting closure of Bank Street on Saturday, December the 2nd, 2022, with third, a rain date. December 3rd. Uh, sorry, that's the rain date. Saturday. Oh, sorry. Never. Yeah, okay. Yep, yep. Saturday, December 2nd, 2022, and the rain date, December 3rd. Uh, Sunday 2022 and it would be from 2 30 p.m. to 9 p.m. for the holiday sip and stroll and this is pending the traffic authority approval any second. discussion on the motion second. Second. second second by mr. Cosgrove all those in favor aye, aye. opposed aye. any abstentions thank you uh, item 5b that's shown on the agenda I'd like to table that there is some conflicting um, times uh, to this versus other people who've applied for the same spot. So we'll have to uh, revisit that. Because we I don't have anybody here. I thought they were aware of it though, Katie. That There's nothing that's been uh, changed here. So I, uh, oh. this can't really go through okay. the way it is. It's not up to me to change the time. So gotcha. we'll table that one. Uh, item number six, uh, we'll make a motion to approve the formation of our temporary B city committee Second. For a six-month term, the following people. Don't. Please, Jeannie is, is uh, actually moving now, so. No? Okay. Yeah. All right. So here's the committee. Their term for all of the following will be October 24th, 2022 through April 23rd, 2023. And that would be Nicholas Puder, Timothy Clark, Ann Stone, Susan Metcalf, Suzanne Von Holt, and Katie Francis. And, and the first one is not happening? No. Uh, she's, please remove Jeannie's Jean. Moving. She's moving. To New Hampshire. Okay, gotcha. And Chris, second? That? I, I'm sorry. I just was stuck on the, the one that you just went very quickly through, which was 5B. Okay, we already voted on that one. We didn't vote on that. You said it was being tabled. Oh, 5B is tabled, right. yes. But does that... Does that mean that they can't film their movie? Well, we'll have to discuss it approval? after because th there was a conflict of a prior uh, permit awarded for someone to use the space. Uh, and uh, You mean the town council approved something on these dates? Town council. I'm, I'm confused about the conflict. I, I'm, I'm, the I'm Women's gonna... Club yeah. has Operation Thanksgiving on November 5th. Okay. And they applied for the permit to use the bandstand and the crossover is where people come through to drop off the food that they deliver. Okay. Gotcha. And it's a, that was done quite a long time ago. And unfortunately, I don't know if this just slipped through, but we can't have 
two people in the same space at the same time. And the uh, application for this did, did not read, uh, which I went back and looked at, it did not start at 6 a.m., so I'm not sure how that, if it's a typo or what. And the Bank Street uh, on November 17th, this is this for the same, uh, the Milford Film Commission. Mm -hmm. um, I think they're here. That, could, we, could we hear from them? Uh, may I finish? Sure, sure. Uh, that also, uh, I believe there's some uh, questions were raised on that. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm, we already voted on the first part. If you want to come back to B, can we finish on item six, which is now in, already in process, or what would you like to do? Well, it just, it, you went so quickly through it, and I think that we're trying to bring arts to New Milford. This is really important. This is a movie okay, that we Okay, and we can know, then stop so Operation Thanksgiving? No, no, no. no. I'm not saying reason, that. I'm Hillary. just I'm talking through <laughs> this that was on the agenda. These okay. people are here. I'm just trying sure. to bring fair. I'm going to leave process. this for the mayor, because there's okay. been no other approvals on these applications. They have to go through well, for, okay. quite for, a few places. For, first, we can circle back to 5B, but right now there's a motion on the right. floor okay. for the temporary B committee. Yes. Uh, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. Okay. Okay. Now, back to item 5B. As I said, I will leave this up to the mayor to, to decide if you'd like to entertain some discussion about this. But the um, application does not match what's here. And not only that, but on the prior one, the first one, which is a November 5th, um, that time, part of that time in that space has been committed prior to their application. So uh, that's something that the mayor can talk about now, or you can talk about it in your office. Um, the other thing I will say, we always pen to uh, traffic authority pending, there's also all the other people that are on there haven't been checked off either. Mm -hmm. So, because uh, I went to look at it to see if it was correct or a typo. So, Mayor, it's okay. up to you. Sure. Good evening, everybody. Happy to shine some light on this. Uh, I've been in conversation. Your name? My name is Eric Bloomquist. I'm not a New Milford resident. I'm working with the New Milford Film Commission. Okay, good. Thanks. You're welcome. Uh, I've been in contact with the Women's Club working on orchestrating this. The application that I've put in for the green that was approved by Park and Rec was for the middle green for all the day and the south green following the Women's Club usage of it for the food drive. I've been in conversation with Pat who put this on the agenda today for me and she said that what was going to happen is the application would be processed in such a way that after they were done with it, that it would just be extended to allow us for the end of the process. That's that's fine, Eric, except that's not what's here, and this was done not today. This agenda was clocked in last week I understand. Friday. So um, when we approve something, what we approve as a legislative body is what goes. So since it doesn't read exactly what you just said, what I could do, if the mayor's okay with this and everyone else is, we can just adapt what's here. I would be happy to do that. My uh, Fine. This, when this, so when this was 3 o'clock in the afternoon, we will, the women's club will vacate with their food products, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So you, you're going to plan to move to the complete southern end of the green as well. And it's the middle crossover that is the problem because that's where the residents pull up to drop off frozen turkeys and food for us. So we couldn't have people in your process, what you're doing, walking around in there with cars coming in. What we usually do is put the sawhorses across with one way for a car to come in and go out the other way. Understood, and that so, would be following their usage of it at two or three o'clock, whatever it is, it would be. So then you could, closed. once we're gone, that's fine. It's just that this says 6 a.m., so that's why. Understood, when I, when I put in the application and it was added to the agenda, I wasn't asked to submit and adapt it. I was just having direct conversations with the women's club. Had I been asked, I certainly would have done that. Right, okay. So you're fine if we change it to three o'clock? Sure. Okay, and it doesn't include on here, by the way, Eric, that you want the southern part of the green. It doesn't say anything about the green. Did I was, you do that with the Parks and Rec? I did, and that was approved last week. Okay, great. So then we can change this. So, we can, uh, so I'd like to just uh, amend uh, item 5B to read that the southern crossover on Saturday, November 5th, uh, for Eric and mainframe pictures would be from 3 p.m. or sooner if or sooner. I was told that they would probably be vacating around 2 p.m., right. but well, we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. defer to what they Well, let's say 3, because we have to load up all the cars. Sure. Okay. Just in case, if we're done, then you can go. 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. 
Uh, and now on the Bank Street, that was not anything um, that I had anything to say about, or the Women's Club had anything to say about that, Mayor. Did, uh, Eric, did you talk to um, the, Mayor, the, the Bank Street group? Yes. And they were fine we're with the hours yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There is one question that Excellent. came up to sure. me from a resident who lives on Bank Street. Mm -hmm. um, what are they to do if they come back at 10 o'clock to come home? How they we'll doing? absolutely let them through. Mm -hmm. To, 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 to walk onto the street or to drive? No, they the drive. People sure. live all upstairs. So um, there's parking. There's parking on this side and parking down. So they can... If it's, if it's a resident, they need to get, of course. We'll, we'll okay, so any that. resident who parks on the street overnight won't be able to do it that night. I think we just need to make that clear It'll to the residents. It'll make clear they could park down in uh, right. Patriots But way, they just like need to know ahead snow. of time because, you know, you don't want to come home and wonder where for, you're For my to knowledge, can I ask? I'm not sure if this is readily available information. What we should expect, what what the overnight parking situation usually looks like on that street. I believe the request was for 8.30 p.m. to 12.30. Yes, right? that's what you have. Uh, what should we expect in terms of I, number of cars? No, no idea. I'm usually asleep before that. Yeah. So I think what we'll do, Eric, is we'll put it out, like on Notify New Milford, yeah. and then they can park uh, at Patriots uh, parking lot like we do during snow emergencies. Okay. They can park mm -hmm. back at Town Hall until you're done. So. And if there's, and if, uh, obviously, if there are extenuating circumstances, I'm not looking yeah. to get in anybody's... You know where the parking area I'm talking awesome. about is, right? I do. Halfway yeah, yeah. Down. yeah, so if someone came out at 10 o'clock to go do something, you would be able to let them yeah. go through. Okay, that's great. I make a note. Thank you. Perfect. And you will uh, make sure that you receive traffic authority approval on... Yeah, I, I think there's a meeting tomorrow night, correct? Yeah. Is that... Yeah, yeah. Is yeah. That? yeah. Right. Great. Thank you. Okay, good. Thank okay. you. Okay, so then the um, 5B, we've already uh, changed that. So the Bank Street uh, will stay the same as 8.30 p.m. to 12.30 a.m., both pending traffic authority approval. Okay. Is that your, is that your motion, Katie? That's my motion. Second. And Hillary any, second. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. Okay, so we already went to the B, temporary B committee. Yep. And now we want to move to item seven, which is finance. And I'd like to move to approve that we increase the ambulance carried in force line item 104-905-0857-240 in the amount of $130,000 to the account for the donation towards, account for donations, I think that should say, towards the purchase of a new ambulance. Second. Any discussion? Uh, Greg, can you fill in the council? Yes. Um, as you recall, last year, there, last fiscal year, there was a donation for the sole purpose towards uh, a donation for the purpose of buying mm -hmm. or contributing towards buying an ambulance. Um, during the course of the year and closing process, that, that was booked to a revenue and um, I'm asking that the appropriation for carried in force be um, increased to the 130,000 because this went out of normal protocol. Normally carried in force comes from the unspent capital items within the general fund budget. However, this was uh, unique in, in so much that it was booked to a revenue. It was caught and um, I'm just asking for the uh, appropriation to be increased by that amount so it doesn't fall to the bottom line. And this was a very generous donation from an so. anonymous, anonymous donor who <laughs> wants to remain anonymous. But guess so. thank you to the donor if they're watching. Yes, thank you. Okay, so we had an explanation of where it's going. Yep. We have a, a second. Yep, for a second. For a second. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. And item 7B, we have an update from our finance director. Good evening, all. Uh, this is the September financial update. Interest rates continue their migration upward, and consequently, I move $14 million out of Webster's Waste Management Money Market account into STIF which resulted in realizing three times the yield we were receiving in Webster. STIF is currently yielding 3.13% and is trending upward. 
The auditors are on site as of today and will be so for the next two weeks. Public, Public Works is having difficulty in obtaining reimbursement for com completed bridge projects. I subsequently reached out to the state contact and the response was optimistic with the individual indicating various issues like turnover and um, other issues, short staffing. Uh, but the uh, individual indicated that uh, the matter will be resolved shortly and uh, I'll keep you updated on the progress. Um, the town is owed approximately $500,000 for Mud Pond Bridge. Revenues. Revenues are at 48.2% of budget. On a straight line basis, we would expect to be at 25%. Tax collections are at 55.7% of budget overall, with current taxes at 56.6%. Virtually all revenues are at or above budget this time, with the exception of the Department of Aging. Expenditures. Expenditures on a cash basis are at 32% of budget. Salaries are running slightly higher than the straight line budget due to a 53 pay period this fiscal year, which will be adjusted at year end. There are no overall concerns with expenditures at this time. In summary, on a cash basis, revenues are at 52 million $824,995.30 and expenditures are $26,712,928.78, leaving the town with a positive cash flow of $26,112,066.80. Any questions? I just have a comment. And you and I have spoken before about this, the interest rates in, in the stifle fund. And uh, I know that there's a double spectrum. How obviously, you know, borrowing is going up, you know, with the Fed, but it helps with those people with savings. And I think when we first started with some of the funding, it was like one percent or one and three quarters. It actually, rate. it was actually seven or nine basis points. Right when we built the budget and like you said from now from then to now it's tripled well we were we had we were diversified right. we had um money you know and webster or savings bank right they very stiff but right. stiff is currently giving us the highest yield right it's liquid it's safe right. so again just by that move right uh, I paid for a couple high-level salaries in Correct. town by, by doing that. And I've always so. talked about, you know, obviously with the town money, you have to be safe with it. But with the interest rates today, we're making, uh, you know, uh, quite a substantial amount of money with the investment uh, from the uh, fund, from the uh, waste management. So it's right. good to hear waste that. Waste management and general fund. Right. General that fund matter. Yeah. I moved a lot of money right. from the general fund investments into uh, STIF as well. So... We're reaping the benefit from from, That's good to hear. from that side of the sword. Yeah, it's good to hear that. Any other, Chris? Um, is there any thing, given where interest rates are today and where they're probably going, at least over the next few months, um, anything? Maybe we sacrifice some liquidity, but get an even higher interest than three percent. Perhaps. Um, again. When you sacrifice liquidity, you're tying up your money in, a, in, a, in an environment of rising inf interest rates. I, I recommend not doing that. Um, there, I mean, treasury bills are giving a good yield now. Right. Um, that's something that could be considered. Could do a two year or something? Two years. Well, two years. six months. I mean, interest. I wouldn't. I wouldn't lock my money up for that long a duration in the rising interest rate environment. I wouldn't recommend that. I mean, there's an opportunity cost. If you go chasing yields, you, you mm -hmm. give up liquidity. Yeah. With stiff, we have both. We have 
high interest rates and, and you know, I mean, instant what is, liquidity. What would a, a say, a six-month T-bill be? Uh, close to 4%. Yeah. Four and change. Hmm? Four fifteen for the 16th yeah. year bonds. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's not bad for, for six stiff, months. I don't know the stiffest. Thing. Stiff is 3.13%. Okay. And it's going up. I showed them. I shared the uh, website with the mayor the other day, and the graph is, right. you know, it's it's a pretty steep slope. Hmm. Good. And their interest rates change daily, so we reap the benefit of that change in daily interest rates. So um, I think it's a pretty pretty good investment for the town. Any other questions for Greg? Thank you, Greg. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Greg. And Katie, before we move to the next thing, I'd, mm -hmm. I'd like to uh, ask the uh, town council um, their permission if we could add to it. I've asked Ivana Butera to come here. She's our social services director to kind of give an update uh, on social services. I know we had a few questions uh, especially when it came to ARPA money. Um, and I asked Ivana to come in and talk a little bit about that. So uh, I'd like to uh, ask that we add that to the agenda, if it's okay with everyone. Yes, I'd like to move to suspend the rules to add um, item 7C. How's that? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you, Ivana, for coming tonight. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Town Council, for giving me a moment to talk a little bit about social services and um, uh, basically how we've been busy lately. Um, I will start with the um, with the ARPA funds. Um, I know that we've been all eager to try to get the word out um, to our community to show them um, how we've been able to uh, push some of this money towards trying to help um, some of these folks out of financial crisis. And um, to date, we have done 15 applications. Um, we've done, well, let me back up. We've approved 15 applications. We have 10 um, that are in progress. Um, I'll probably have about three or four of them to the mayor's office by the end of the week. Um, we've expended over $12,000, almost $13,000 in assistance. Um, anything ranging from, uh, for a Good Samaritan Fund, which is the general fund of any, helping any sort of household assistance, anything from, um, car repairs, medical expenses, um, and something that could uh, mean, help maintain their, their home or a child-related uh, expense. We've expended anywhere between $290 to $1,000. It's been individual awards. Um, in terms of the HOPE Fund, um, the average is most of them have been for $1,000 because of the uh, prices of rent and the amount of people that are struggling. Um, we've not helped anybody with mortgage um, yet. Um, but the lowest grant award was 620, um, and the highest was 1,000 for those. And those have been the majority. Um, we've approved nine so far. We have not denied any. Um, so we've basically been um, <coughs> trying to uh, fit people into this, uh, into the, the options of this for the last uh, few months. Um, there's been a lot of things going on in the state in the last several months. Uh, some of you might have heard of Unite CT. Unite CT was a uh, federal program um, where states were able to uh, use these funds to offset the cost of rent. This program um, started sometime last year. It uh, ended in March. Um, we've helped, gosh, probably about 60 or 70 people um, apply uh, to that, anywhere from referring them or kind of um, uh, walking them through the process. So, um, Vana, not to interrupt absolutely. you, but I guess I'm going to. You're, that's okay. But one of the things that I really appreciate what you guys do is the, really the consultative aspect yeah. of really helping uh, those in need. So we had some questions as, how come we're not getting this ARPA money out fast enough? How come we're not putting those, uh, using this money so quickly? Mm -hmm. uh, I know in talking with you, it's you really want to set the person up uh, for stability so there may be other options as you just said you, uh, unite ct was one of them there may be other options in your tool belt 
or the states or the federal government's tool belt that would be a better fit for that rather than a one-time ARPA payment, correct? That's actually um, correct, Mayor. Um, you're, you're, you're exactly um, in the line of thinking of, of where I was going with Unite CT. When you've got a program like Unite CT, which could offer up to $15,000 towards not, some, not just their back rent, but um, their future rent, so they can then continue into stability. Um, when you've got a program like that, that's going to be your first line of defense, also because those things have deadlines that are shorter than other deadlines. Um, when you've got energy assistance this past year that was extended till June and folks were getting, uh, many folks were getting close to $2,000 towards their, um, towards assistance, uh, maybe even more, um, you're going to go for that first. And not only are you going to go for that because it's a one-time stipend, but for like, say, electric folks who are on heating costs, that opens a door for them. So you get them into the program, you get them the funds, then you get them on a, on a budget program that then lasts the next 12 months until the next energy cycle. So we try to hit the short term, but we try to see what's going to give them the most longevity in terms of assistance. And there's a lot of things happening. Um, so um, we basically, this has definitely been um, a strong um, uh, tool in our box, if you will. Um, something that we've assessed as folks are coming in. Um, and now we're, we're using it a lot more than we have the last couple of months um, because now things are happening. We, we sense the economy, obviously, you know, I don't think it was a surprise to any of us, the economy is going to get tighter. Um, folks are out there, they're working, um, but their dollar isn't going as far. Um, these programs have ended. We, we just heard Unite CT open and um, Mayor, I don't know if you heard, but I'm, what I'm finding out is that it's not opening. It's actually just revisiting some people who didn't right. get through the process right. the first time um, and seeing if they can. So, you know, those, those, some doors are closing. So we started off with our federal dollars. We started off with our community partners. We started off with those earlier deadlines. You don't want to see money not spent. Um, then we're coming down to our local funds. Our local funds are going to be necessary as we go, as we turn the corner, as we enter our winter and our, um, and our next spring um, to have those. Um, and when you're looking at $15,000 versus 1000 or you're looking at um, a program that can you know, get you down to $100 a month um, for your energy bill, um, as opposed to just $1,000 to pay off a bill, um, again, there's that way. Um, Ivana, could I just ask? You Absolutely. I, I just think too, it's important for people watching and for council as well that when you talk about, which is so smart to start with the shorter deadlines, but the amount of time you have to to expend the ARPA money is three years, right? Yes, I believe until this yeah. 2023. Right. So you can go through a lot of a lot of other possibilities and programs and things, and and without hitting that so hard. Right, right. And, you know, um, you know, examples that we're seeing, too, is, you know, as, as people are using up the money that they were given, um, as they're trying to then rebudget everything they have and trying to stay on track, we're seeing an increase in expenses. It's hitting our housing sure. market. It's hitting, it's hitting the housing stock, not just with our housing prices for purchasing, but also in the rental markets are going up. They're being coming competitive and, you know, people have to meet that um we're looking at energy costs that are going up we're also looking at an energy program right now that was not funded the way it was funded the previous year those were covid monies that added to it we're hoping for some more money um but the awards are not near um where they are we're also looking at um the one thing that's fantastic about the arpa funds is that it is not an income means program yes income is collected because we have to meet the covid criteria um, a financial crisis had to have occurred as per the federal um, guidelines. Um, however, we don't have to limit that as a, you know, we're not forced to do any of those limitations like we are for some state programs. And we're seeing a lot of working families that are just above that bubble. Um, and this is a way, another way for us to help them. So we do a lot of work in assessing um, where our folks are, um, what they are eligible for, um, what's going to take us the longest, take them the longest way. Um, and so sometimes that's why um, we're not going to, we didn't just, we, 
I don't. I think it would have been irresponsible if we just sat there and said, "Here's, you know, here's the money. Let's go give it now," um, because it's not how we operate. Um, we try to find long-term plans. We try to assess their needs. We try to find out where they're going. Where can they go? Um, with the circumstances that they're dealing with right now, um, and how can we make that? And sometimes it's um, a shorter jump, but a longer road. So that's that's what we try to deal with. Um, but we are picking up. Um, we're probably done about 30% more energy applications at this time this year um, than we have in the past. Um, uh, I credit that. Uh, you know, I, I credit that to my my staff because. Their outreach is amazing, but I credit that to the public. I credit that to the public for coming out early because the one thing we try to do is tell them the plan, um, and they're doing that. And I really, really love to see when when folks that we've worked with or new folks, and we've got about uh, ten new folks in the last month alone that we haven't seen in the past. It's families, households. Um, but I credit that to them planning ahead um, and trying to get that assistance because that does take time. Those applications have a 30 to 45 day turnaround for the most part. Um, so we try to get them in early. Um, and um, the other thing that we're noticing is we're noticing the uptake in the food bank, which is another indication of what we're, um, what we're gonna be seeing and what we're starting to see. The families are coming back to the food bank. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's one of our, it's, it's one of our, you know, it's not only our, our favorite program because of the way we operate, um, but because we're not held by any sort of um, uh, standards, income standards that a lot of state programs push on us, you know, that, that we really can't control. The uh, food bank is there for anybody who's food insecure. Um, they come in um, and uh, basically we can hook them up with the food bank. Um, can we do something else with them? That really just depends. You know, it has a means test to it, um, eligibility requirements and so forth that are again pressed upon us. Um, in addition to that, with the food bank being right across the hall from social services, is that they do get that um, opportunity to meet with social workers, have a full assessment um, if they choose, um, or if they're looking for other programs. Um, and it gives us an opportunity to, to do that right on the spot, um, which I think sets that apart from um, uh, a lot of other um, places. And we're really fortunate that we have the space that we have to be able to do that. Um, sometimes just a conversation with a with a volunteer um, and telling them that there's something going on in their lives you know it's it's that how you doing and then they start to tell you and then the volunteer can look at them and say please go across the street you know across the hall um, you know your oil bill you're worried about or something like that they can do something right away um, so I did want to share those stats with you because I think that's um, it foresees a lot um, in the first quarter, uh, July, we saw 231 on duplicated households. We're up to 290, and we haven't seen those numbers um, in a very in a, in a long time. Um, at the height of COVID, on an on an average, you saw about 250 a month in the height of COVID. But by December of 2020, we were over 330 people, um, and then of course it went down. It went down because there were other resources out there, um, and things were okay. But now we're seeing that. We're serving over 121 families um, with children, um, and it's well over 200 children. Um, and that's, you know, those are unduplicated numbers. Um, we're also seeing, we've registered already 324 families. So just, uh, they don't all come every week. They come when they need to. Um, they're not going to overly use um, something that they don't need. They, de they, they come in when it's necessary for them to then um, go back and live their lives. But um, we're over 200, 2,000 visits already, um, and um, over 18,000 meals, and that probably averages about over 60,000 pounds of food that we've already handed out. Um, we think it's going to continue to grow, um, and we're going to see it in families. And the families that are coming in are usually the ones with more children um, who are going to be seeing it, who are already seeing it at the uh, at the uh, grocery store. So I wanted to share that with you in light of everything. And um, what do we do on a daily basis? We're basically, someone comes in, they're looking for assistance. We're assessing them. And right now I just spoke with one of my social workers, had a meeting with her this morning, and she's like, okay, so I did this ARPA fund for her. Um, I already did energy assistance, hooked her up with the food bank. She's coming back. We're going to do a SNAP application for the kids. And she just found out her kids can get Husky, so we're going to help her do that. Um, that was one family. 
we've already done all of that, and that was, you know, in a matter of a week. Um, you do, you know, your staff do a wonderful job when it comes to assessing, and we, on our weekly meetings, you know, you guys are the canary in the coal mine, so to speak, when we see these uptick in numbers, and we look at this during COVID, too, every week. Where is food assistance going to need, you know? We asked uh, Mark at the farm to bring additional produce, and we get it from other farmers to bring Absolutely. in the fresh uh, foods for uh, those residents in need. Also, could you talk a little bit about, and we had our debriefing with uh, Officer Toro uh, uh, today, too, as well as the chief, and with Lauren and yourself. Can you kind of give the, the town council an update on our domestic violence mm -hmm. and also on homelessness and how we help those in need in this respect as well? with Absolutely. a partnership with the police department. Absolutely, thank you, Mayor. Um, I wanna start off that conversation with a huge thank you to the town council and to the mayor for um, uh, giving us the full-time program and volunteer coordinator position, um, who right now is doing the majority of that food bank um, in light of the fact of those 290 families that are coming on a weekly basis. Um, it has given the opportunity, of course, for our social worker, Lauren Hare, to um, uh, push her position away from programming and um, fully into social work. Half of that, of course, being the crisis navigator, um, which is handling uh, those cases. She has about 30 people on her crisis list right now. Um, she's engaged over, uh, on an average, she probably in one week puts about 30 hours, 25 to 30 hours just in her crisis work alone um, in terms of trying to assist them in uh, and follow up um, in trying to assist with them with the crisis that are happening of those of those 30 people currently she's got about 17 or 18 that are identified um, with intimate partner violence or manipulation um, or intimidation um, and what does that really mean um, some of these folks that are coming in have a history um, it could be from their past um, we're noticing, though, uh, upon interviewing, that if there's a current situation that's taking place that may not be the same kind of abuse they've done in the past, but it's affected their ability to have a healthy relationship. They don't realize the oppression that is happening and how, um, you know, after not seeing them for a year or so, how it brought them in, um, maybe for, you know, something is uh, like an energy application or uh, connect the dots financially because of a, something that's happened, an illness or whatever and then realizing that's long-term. Um, we've had a, a recent um, uh, person who, again, was um, we've known for years and has come back, and this uh, Lauren was able to get this person to re-engage with the center um, back into um, uh, therapy and um, counseling with the crisis intervention counselors at the center, which is the, the Women's Center. It's now called the Center for Empowerment um, and Education. Um, and um, she's followed up with that, and uh, that's made a, a huge difference. Um, so in terms of that, um, we're working closely with Officer Toro. Um, we are seeing an uptick in, um, in homelessness. Um, I think he would have the, um, the better stats for that. Um, but we do have, um, what we try to do as social services, and we have right now, like just last week, she's had 10 interventions with housing. Um, of the active clients that she has. Um, and that was just this week. Um, sometimes she has less, um, she hasn't had anything less than say three or four, and at the most she's had 12 encounters for housing alone. Um, but we are not necessarily, we're not going, we're not the triage people, we're not the boots on the ground, that would be the police, and they're taking a wonderful stance in trying to, to pick up where um, the other community uh, care coordinator has left off. Um, we're trying to get the folks before they get there. Uh, we're trying to do the prevention. Um, they're coming in, their housing is unstable, and that's where Lauren will jump in, does the long term, um, tries to connect them with um, housing or um, uh, help build relationships if they can't afford housing independently. Um, maybe they could, you know, uh, reignite something with a family member or something like that to do something temporary. Um, what can they do to increase their income so they can be sustainable? in terms of then being able to be their home, uh, their own, um, uh, being able to stand on their own in housing. Um, but we are noticing that um, we're seeing, a, you know, an increase in folks that are coming back 
um, on the verge of being in their cars. Some of them are in their cars. Um, and we're dealing also with a um, congested shelter situation um, in our area. And, um, and so the Connecticut is seeing that across the board. Um, it seems like a, a real um, sober thought um, but the other side of it is the fact that there is a lot of housing advocates out there, partners that we work with, that are trying to do the best they can to address the issue um, and, uh, and hopefully you know, curb that before it gets even, even deeper. Um, unfortunately, we've seen a lot of people that are trying to stay within the Milford and we've had to help them try to um, gear them towards kind of looking a bit outward um, be, you know, to other towns um, to try to find sustainable housing. Um, then, you know, again, maybe, uh, maybe some um, job skill training or some increase or, again, maybe sharing some, a home or something to then increase their ability and their um, ability to sustain housing. And then hopefully they'll be able to return to New Milford at some point. Um, we've had some folks that have been uh, homeless, um, staying in hotels, and with the help of the Danbury Can, they've um, ventured back into Milford, New Milford um, and able to regain that. Um, kids were able to stay in school and now they have a home they can go back to and not have to take the uh, um, borrowed transportation to get back to a hotel. So there's been a lot of different scenarios. Um, and we're going to ask Officer Toro and Chief Saru to come to our next meeting in November, I believe, on the 14th. <laughs> and they'll kind of give an update as they're really, as we explained to the council and to the to people that are watching and were in the audience at the time, that they're the triage they're the ones that are for the immediacy that's the ones that need it right now here and now and then they portion that off to our partners whether it's ccr whether it's catholic charities um, we push those off to those people that can do it the best in that respect and then as ivana said they do the casework and they also do the prevention so it seemed to be very successful uh, moving so far obviously we want to continue with that as the chief will say, uh, as a department our size, he's never seen uh, really the case management that we're doing as combined both social services and uh, the police department. We're also going to be bringing in the senior center because uh, 60 and above, uh, that's going to be the senior center the same way social services is with their advocates as well. Yeah. So. We have a lot of strong community partners out there, um, and we need them. We need the center. We need CCR. We need some of the substance abuse and mental health providers that are in the area um, because it has to be that way. These, these situations are bigger um, than just one entity, um, and we, we do so many different things. Um, you know, one moment our social workers could be doing an energy application and trying to uh, just get you know uh, working folks back to their jobs and everything and the next thing they're dealing with something that's in a, a deep crisis and we need our partners to then do that and and keep that longevity um does anybody have any any questions, questions any or? questions for Yvonne? i have a question so so, so the, let's say the the application someone comes and asks for the money so what are the criteria you have to show them that you're a citizen and you're what, what is that you have to show them any documentation would this be for the arpa for anything that come to you and they say, I don't have money, I need $2,000 because I have to pay for X, Y, Z. What would be the criteria you give them the money? Um, well, um, first of all, we'll, yeah, we assess the needs, see what it is, um, find out what the demographics of the household are, um, what their money source is, um, and then it just kind of, that's where it starts to kind of depends. Do they have to have ID? Um, well, they have to prove that they are who they are. They don't need to necessarily be a, um, uh, they don't need to be a person with, a, a U.S. citizen with a Social Security number. They can be a green card holder. They could be a resident of New Milford. Um, and then it depends on, you know, um, really depends on what we're trying to apply for. Um, even undocumented uh, families can apply for energy assistance through the state program. They do have to abide by different criteria than a U.S. citizen does, which um, is a lot stricter. Um, and uh, they do need to have at least one member who does carry a Social Security number um, in their household. However, we have some nonprofits out there that can help them with heating assistance that will not look to um, their citizenship to um, as an advantage or disadvantage to them being able to um, help heat their, the home that they live in, that they are currently paying for, um, 
and, and, and the uh, town that they're working in. Um, for the ARPA funds, uh, again, it's not an income uh, means, it's not a means testing as opposed to some of the other programs that we partner with. Um, so basically, that really, they just have to show that there was a, um, they hit a financial crisis uh, during COVID. Um, and during COVID, it could be any time since about, say, February, March of 2020 to, you know, just three months ago. Um, but they also have to have some sort of a plan. So if somebody's like $5,000 behind in their rent and our grant max is out at 1,000, um, we may not, they may not be in a position just quite yet to use ARPA um, because we can't get them out of that hole. Um, so we have to start looking at what other options are there. Um, and sometimes it's a difficult, you know, sometimes it's who, you know, what can you do to increase income, decrease expenses. Um, and then sometimes it's a harder conversation of maybe the home you're in isn't sustainable. And again, let's look at maybe some of the other relationships you have in, uh, in your life. Um, and is there an alternate avenue that you can take, hopefully temporary. Mm. Um, so, um, sorry for the long answer, but that's, that, you know, it, it no, isn't it, black it, and white. It explains, I mean, it depends on the situation. It, it really does. I was does. looking for the ID portion yeah, of it but as you well. Can see, <laughs> you can see that as an example of how we have to really listen and figure out where the person's at. We have to find out, you know, who's in the household, um, what, you know, and, and then basically once we do that, then we can figure out what are the options that are, are that are offered. Um, so there, we're gonna have more than There's something others. you said it's worrisome because you said that is, you, you see the trend actually increasing. More people need help. And my understanding is more people need help than in tw uh, 2020. Is that true? More people, yeah, you know, there was, in some ways, there was a reprieve in the last, say, fiscal year um, mm -hmm. or so um, because there were so many other safety nets that went beyond the local assistance, um, you know, so, but those those are finite and they're now shutting down, you know, mm -hmm. uh, there's no more stipends, there's no more extended unemployment, people are back employed, and so right now that's when people are going to start looking to um, their municipality to say, hey, is there something you can help us with? Do you have a community partner? Is it a church? Is it a, a nonprofit? Is it a state program that you might be aware of? Is it your own? Is it something that the, the, the town is supporting? Um, and you know what we're seeing also is that we're seeing folks that went back to work. Mm -hmm. um, and you're seeing folks that went back to work and they're, um, they're, they're living there every day. Um, and now they're being caught off guard by um, you know, the same kinds of wages that they've had a year ago, um, but yet their, their food, you know, their food budgets are going up by $100 a week or their transport SAS programs like this give you that, 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 um, that opportunity. And a lot of our folks come in this time of year, they say, can I take advantage of this program? Can it, can it help? <coughs> and then they move on. Um, and they go ahead and they live their lives and sometimes... So what's the percentage of the young people at say 21 to 35 of the people that need assistance or help from your organization? Oh goodness. Um, a percentage way. Right? Peter, I mean a plus minus 10, whatever percent. It doesn't, doesn't have to be exact. I just want to have a, um, a picture of the population. Is it about older people that cannot actually make meets and ends? We don't, we don't work with people over the age of 60. Okay. That would so be the senior is, center. Is, is the top. Yeah. So, so what's, the, what's the average age that actually those people do have a problem to, to meet? The right age? now, um, right now I would say those are, our, are anywhere between say 25 and 45 that are raising children. I would say that, you know, I mean I know that's a, that's a big group, but because we're seeing a lot of families coming back to the food bank, um, that we're seeing a lot of those folks that are, that are working, they're, they're paying childcare. Um, they are going back to work. They're not working home right. anymore. Um, they're traveling back and forth to work um, and trying to um, maintain the, the, where the activities of their children, but they're expending more in gasoline. It's going, it's, their dollar's not going as far. Mm -hmm. Any um, other questions for? Uh, quick question. Yeah. I don't remember um, building in the 1,000 maximum her, was that in the, when you guys approved that the Good Samaritan and the, the ARPA fund that was one thousand, or is that something built in? Yeah, yeah. So um, typically, when social services is assisted anybody through their um, 
through our local Good Samaritan funds, our general funds, be it before, mm -hmm. we were only able to help at about 250 to 500 dollars. So we really did see the thousand as a real um, plus. Um, but if you were to, anybody have a calculator? If you were to take a hundred thousand dollars and divide it by a thousand, um, how you helping a hundred people? Hundred people. Helping a hundred people when we help like a thousand in a in a year. Um, you but know. It's, a, it's like a self-imposed limit. Like if that's not that we didn't pass that no, at the council or who right. This is what they do all day long. Right. They felt that the thousand was right. best. So if someone were to come to you with, you know, $5,000, I'm going to lose my house if I don't have 5000 I mean, I'm just saying mm -hmm. it's but not. But that, as Ivana said, though, or the is difference that just there, Hillary, is if you're so far <coughs> in debt, mm -hmm. they're not there to get you out of debt this month because what are you going to do next month? So that's why you, before, you just said you used $5,000 as an example. If they're that far in behind in their rent or let, you haven't had any mortgage lately. But the idea is if they can help by defraying some of that cost, then you have money to go buy the groceries or whatever. It's no different. I, I think a lot of the things you said are, it's no different for anybody in this room or in this building, in this town, whatever status you are, it's just a matter of how hard it hits you. And they don't have that net. So if $5,000 was your, you would let it get to that point, you have some other deeper issues, I would imagine, financially. Yeah, I mean, that, that was a bit arbitrary in terms of that, but I was going for an extreme number in terms of the fact that part of assisting anybody with funds is trying to find out what a sustainable plan is. Um, historically, our HOPE Fund, um, prior to um, putting the word ARPA in front of it, was is a, a, a prevention program, an eviction prevention program, um, or, you know, um, if it's necessary for closure prevention. It, it's to um, allow somebody more time. Um, is it going to prevent it for another two years or so? No. But if we're talking to a landowner, we're saying, listen, if we help you with this, can you, you know, can you work with the tenant? Can you um, allow them to give, you know, maybe make a payment arrangement and allow them to give a little bit more money if, if they have to owe more than, say, the 500 we would have capped it off on? Could this buy the tenant another 60 to 90 days? to have a plan that can take effect and change what their current situation is. Um, maybe they're out on medical leave, um, and so that's why they're behind. Um, or they're in the middle of changing, you know, they lost a job, but maybe in two, three months, you, your hope is that they'll get one and they can sustain at home. However, if they're in a situation where they're just so far behind that, and they don't have that, they, I mean, if, if we gave them $5,000 and that was say on average three months, two and a half months, and they don't have any money, then all we're doing is just putting money towards something that's inevitable. Um, when instead, it's more like, listen, um, you've got to face something that's really tough in your life right now. Um, and so can we put our efforts towards job, you know, getting you in, you know, in connected to the career navigators, get you into job training, um, again, reestablishing relationships, but sometimes it's facing a harder truth. Um, those aren't the easy situations, those are extremely difficult, but um, if somebody was $1,500 behind and $1,000 were able to get from ARPA, um, but we know that they will have the money next month or something, we, we can see their plan, we can see that they're come, going back to work or somebody's just got a new job and the employer's like, yep, they're making $30 an hour, they're going to be good then you know, could we look to another one of our partners or community partners to come up with a $500 difference? We could probably do that. So, um, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Any other questions for Ivana? Can you speak of the shelters that folks have an opportunity to spend time? Where are the shelters? So um, there is a shelter in Danbury. Still? Still. Okay. Um, on, they are going through. Um, uh, situation right now um, where they're probably going to have to leave where they are. Um, I did hear some news that they're finding other locations. Um, this has put a constraint on them to be able to bring more people into the shelter. Um, we've had a few people that have gotten into a shelter recently and it was Waterbury that they had to go to. Um, the Danbury can is trying to help a transportation for people like that and unless they had their own vehicle. Um, right now Lauren is working with somebody who or two people that were um, stayed at the Waterbury shelter but um, have come back and, and made their reconnecting to New Milford because they were 
longer uh, long New Milford residents. Mm -hmm. But um, Danbury, Waterbury, and Hartford, uh, New Haven, um, Torrington sometimes, but they they tend to be full um, and they tend to get um, a lot of the upper Litchfield County towns that don't have any. So, okay. <clears throat> thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions for Ivana? Ivana, thank you. Thanks, Ivana. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you all very much. To all your staff. Appreciate really it. We appreciate the effort. Thank you. Katie? Great job. Uh, <clears throat> item eight. Uh, I'd like to move that the council approve the hot work ordinance requested by Fire Marshal Kevin Reynolds. And I believe you all have a draft of that. And, and Randy, you. Is there a second? Do I have a second? second? Do I have a second on the hot second. work ordinance? Thank you. Thank you, Doug. And uh, Randy, could you uh, talk to the council as uh, I had asked if you could uh, really come up with this draft? Yes. On Monday, this past Monday, the mayor in, in, our, in our monthly meeting asked if I could please expedite the, uh, the work on the hot work ordinance, and so I did. I had been working with uh, Marshall Reynolds on this, who actually came up with this back in J July, came up with an initial draft. And what I did is I did a, a comprehensive amount of research regarding it, and I found no ordinance that I thought was suitable given our scheme of ordinances. So I drafted our own. The ordinance is based upon the National Fire uh, Protection Association rules and regulations which the state has adopted and which Marshall Reynolds has recommended. The, the, the uh, project that, that is drafting this ordinance relates only to commercial work. It doesn't relate to residential buildings. Remember we talked about sweating a pipe in somebody's house. Well, that doesn't apply. But it does have a comprehensive application to a lot of activities that we would no, not really consider to be something that should be separately permitted. The Fire Association disagrees, and so does OSHA, by the way, and so does uh, Connecticut OSHA. So that, that ordinance is drafted along the lines recommended by Marshall Reynolds in accordance with his understanding, and mine too, based upon research of the National Fire Protection Association uh, standards. It has adequate standards. It has a civil penalty provision, which Marshall Reynolds and I talked about just, just tonight. And um, the appeal provision is statutory, Section 7-152C of the, of the uh, statutes. I don't know how prevalent enforcement of this is. The other town attorneys that I spoke of never heard of it, never heard of a hot work ordinance. There's one in Bloomfield, which is not ours. And, um, and I believe this has uh, adequate standards. It has the safeguards required to, for notice and, and uh, uh, civil penalties. And we have the talent to enforce it. So that's what I've presented, that's what I drafted, and that, I believe, comports with, with Marshall Reynolds' request and the mayor's expedited request. And uh, Kevin, could you address the council as to why, as our fire marshal, you feel the need for the commercial hot work ordinance? Absolutely. So what it's going to do, it's going to give us eyes on what's going on in our town. It's going to let us to do an inspection educate the people that are doing the hot work. They're going to have to read the 51B. Good. They're going to have to comply with a bunch of the uh, requirements. Um, I hate to bring it up, but obviously the high school, that was an issue. I don't want to see any other commercial building, any building catch on fire. We can also do the education part of it also with the, the contractor at, whenever they come into town. Katie? Okay. Uh, that you just brought up what I was going to ask questions. So part of this is ensuring that the overseeing entity that is doing the job has a responsibility that can be traced back to make sure that every employee that's on that job or in their purview or whatever is mandated to understand what this means so they wouldn't do it. So there's nobody going to say, geez, nobody ever told me. If it's a good company, Yes, that, every employee should be, be educated. Right, with but the will there process. be something as part of this that ensures that the boss signs off and says, yes, I have, I have provided my staff with information on when, this? Yes, that'll happen when we provide the permit Okay, form. and does the permit get, have to be placed visibly as other permits do? We will make sure that that is, that'll Great. be part of it, yep. Thank Absolutely. you, Kevin. So, and just to be clear, this is only for building activity this is not 
a local business owner, he's got a body shop, and he's doing some welding, and as a normal course of his business. Is that right? Right. That that will not fall under that. It'll be um, putting in an air handler system, say at the high school or wherever, and yep. they're going to be cutting, torching, welding, whatever. Demo, demolition. Demolition. Yeah. If they're demo, demoing a, a steel structure and they're going to be using torches, it'll be required. Okay. And what's the reason for the um, only 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday? If, if they've got um, the training and they've got somebody doing the uh, the fire watch and all of that it allows us to know when the, the processes are going to be going on and also depending on the building and the activity going on we can prep the fire department also to say hey listen x y and z is going on at this location it just it just gives more control mm -hmm. over instead of they're doing it at, you know okay. two o'clock in the morning and right they might try to fly under the radar by doing it at two o'clock in the morning there's also a provision that allows for special consideration. Okay, that's that was going to be my next question. Is there yep. is there a chance for exceptions? Okay, yeah, absolutely. All right. Just okay. another quick question. So it starts the very first thing is any non-residential building. So I'm going to build a multi-unit apartment house. Whatever, mm -hmm. I can do whatever I want. Uh, I believe it's I in here. It, it speaks about new construction. If if they're going to be. Um, so, it, but it's un, it's non-residential work activity, including new construction renovation. So, d is there uh, is that purposeful? You, it I, I probably will not be getting involved with the new a new residential building as far as the hot work goes. Okay. Depending on the on the size of the building, okay. there there's certain things that where I would get involved with it. Okay. But no, I'm not looking to micromanage. Every no, resident. I didn't mean like yeah. like a single family home or whatever. But if we were to build a, whatever, at over fifty five, you know, a thing like yeah, it's, affordable it's housing, building. something there, like that. There's going to be exceptions to certain okay. buildings. So if are. somebody's putting up a large structure from scratch, you're mm -hmm. going to know about it, and you'll right. decide if it's in the realm of this. And that'll be one of the questions in the process. Are you going to be doing any of the hot work? If you are, please apply for this Great. permit. It, it all it's going to be case by case when it comes to that. And one last question. You know how we have the DST meetings when people come and they just get to chat about what they want. Would this be included as in the kind of thing they're told about in our town? When Kevin talks to them. He, I'm sure he yeah. mentioned uh, and somebody's it's something coming, new. Yep, like it. somebody's coming in to, to put a new building in. That'll definitely be you covered. Bring it up. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Yep, they'll know way ahead of time when it's a new building or if someone comes for a permit to do some type of major work to their building, we'll be involved with it and we'll advise them of it. And don't forget the permit fee is very reasonable. I see that. And it's not a per inspection fee. Right. It's right. and then there's the penalty of the two hundred bucks a day. Right. Just if they don't. Right. Any other questions? I have a question. Help? Thank you. Um, we just got this tonight, so I'm trying mm -hmm. to absorb sure. it all. Um, it's a permit for a week, roughly until the fri Friday of the same week. Right. Right. So <laughs> if it's a longer project, is it fifty dollars? Every week. Nope, it'll be up to our discretion to uh, extend the, the permit, as we do with burning permits. If the <laughs> weather isn't right, okay. we will extend the permit and bur as far as burning brush or something like that. Okay. And then the reason that the different organizations are not supporting this, do we have, do we understand why not everyone is behind this particular? Many of them just didn't get to it, hadn't occurred to them, and haven't had a loss like we had in New Milford High School. I've talked to a number of town municipal lawyers, and many of them just haven't done it. Stanford's done it, obviously. The cities have done it, but right. most towns have not. Okay. Nobody's against it. I don't think it's been proposed right. in most towns. Sal? So the, the question, can we uh, enforce the violation, say someone, you do the inspection, whatever, you do something, and there's one strike, the guy said something, <coughs> whatever, on, like in high school, and then we find that we can terminate the contract, it's over, they cannot sue us for terminating. No, you, you, under Connecticut law, what you can do is you can, you can, you can sanction them under the ordinance, okay. but if you're going to remove them from the village from an eligible uh, bidder going forward, or try to throw them off a job, then you're going to be doing a couple of things. Mm. You're going to be harming the owner, mm -hmm. you're going to be inducing a breach of contract, and you're going to be creating a restraint of trade, which we want to avoid. So. Mm -hmm. If the legislature says that's one of the remedies we can do, we can put it in. Mm. But I wouldn't recommend trying it. 
in, in this type of case. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thanks, Kevin. Okay. So Any um, my revisions I can make very easily before I send it to the town clerk, if, if you'd like. Yep. And also, <laughs> Randy has to go to a town meeting. Yes, it does. Right. 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 So we have but a it has motion. to be in the town clerk's office for the is public there hearing. More discussion, just not questions to that. I was going to ask, is there any, has anybody brought up any changes about, th that's that's the thing, as Randy just said, I mean, we've just been talking in discussion, so is there any particular part of this that we would want, anyone no, wants to? No, to make clear that there's an extension, then you can extend this permit period, as, mm -hmm. as Alex suggests. Right, right. I can do that. So shouldn't that be put? Yeah, I can exchange that before, yeah. before you send it. When you send it, I can make that change. It's a minor one. And are you asking us to vote on this right now? Well, the motion we was the, the motion was to approve the hot work ordinance as requested by our fire marshal. So we already know of one thing we want to add to it. But we haven't read it. What do you mean? You read it right now. It's right here. You have the attorney right here. I just got oh. it tonight. Do you okay. want me? Do you want okay. to so take, take ten minutes to read it? <clears throat> Absolutely. Okay. So, Randy, would you be noting that change to? Add to us. I'm already adding them, so I may be extended by request. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> so I have more questions now. I'm still reading. Sure. So That's does, a, right does the entire process follow under the fire marshal's office? The, the permit, getting the permit, the inspections. Um, inspections. Yep. Everything, Everything falls in your office. Yes. So that fifty dollars per permit is going to cover the additional time and et cetera for you. No, but I think it's a. I I just use fifty dollars. That's what a lot of our inspection fees are. I mm -hmm. I didn't even look into it as far as that goes. I mean, should it be more? Obviously, our time is our time is worth a lot more than fifty dollars. I know. I'll tell you that, especially with the process that it's going to take. I'm just, I just put that. If you guys want to change that? That's up to you guys. Do you have any idea how many permits you'll be issuing? I have no idea. No idea. Well, you have to look at the non-residential structures, construction, renovations, and things. You know when there's something like that being done right. through the grapevine or seeing it yourself. Would you say it's five a week? I would say... One a week? A dozen, dozen a year. That's more than I was thinking. Yeah, I think it's going to be a small number. Right. Okay. I mean, there's going to be a lot of people that don't even know about this, and they're going to, you right. know, and, but we're not everywhere at, at once. Right. So, it, like you said, the little bird will ch come by and chirp and yeah. say that they're over there doing this or whatever. But, and listen, we, we just want safety. With, with I think it's more not a financial you, game, it's more no. safety. Right. Make right. sure that people Do you know what's really important on the contractor? That's a good question. As far as the court? <laughs> as far as right here into where we're creating an ordinance that doesn't have value unless it can be enforced so is it enforceable yeah we, we our office can issue a citation for it if they don't comply or whatever and okay. i'm telling you right our office does not want to get involved with that i know <laughs> so that's but randy i think you're going to be able to answer that better i think you like if if we issued a citation is that the question is that or even to make sure that it's getting done and that we really are safer because they are getting the permits and the right things are happening. Is, 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 it, is it a nice thing to put somewhere and then it's going to not make a difference? Well, in other words, how do they know about it? Seriously. Mm -hmm. So I guess it would have to be part and parcel of the plan to kind of build Right. Right. And that's where I brought we, up the DST and your planning and we yeah, have those to educate people, the people have to coming in. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And once the word gets out in town that, they, hey, they got a hot work permit, I'm sure they'll travel fast through the contractors. And to expand upon that, Randy, in your legal opinion, if I am a contractor that holds a license, and I'm doing a big project because this is a commercial <coughs> job, not a residential job, and I don't follow all the rules. For instance, we have a hot work permit ordinance in the town of New Milford, and I fail to do that, but then a fire is created. My exposure is tremendous, correct? Yeah, you have a violation oh, called negligence per se. So, so this self, so because of this, this kind of self propels the ordinance 
for those that are in the business of doing construction commercially? In a civil sense, yes. In other words, yep. uh, in, a, in a lawsuit sense, yes. Thank and this you. would be added, whatever this becomes and how it ends up, would be added to any of the information that someone would receive if they come to New Milford wanting to build a non-residential, and even part of maybe what the residential people get to read. Well, I'll add that if for large residential projects, this may be required too. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's certainly something that um, I think anybody who's in the construction business, a builder, whether it's a home or an apartment house, should be aware of this. And, you know, if they don't know about it, well, bad on us. I think it should be part of what anybody, like a building permit of any kind. Remember can, can we add a question to the building permit that says, will you be doing any hot work? Absolutely. Yeah. The, process, yeah. The, yeah, the process will be If yes. Yeah. What happened? Decades Remember decades ago? ago with the swimming pools, when they came out of the regulation, yes. you had to have a fence. And everybody said, oh, I didn't know that. Well, yeah, you did, because the building official told you you had that's that right. fence. That's right, right. Uh, but that, that's, that happened back then. I remember that. And the people saying, I, I, I don't want to put a fence up. I have to put a fence up. Yeah, you do. You but know. I like to think now we're a little bit tighter on talking to people about things. Our building department and our meetings pre and during. But other, the other commissions will have to know, the planning and the zone, everybody will have to know about this, right? The CEO knows about it. The I mean, they'd have to officially, you know what I'm saying, have it in their repertoire. Has there been any um, sort of thought or research, sort of what Alex was getting to with why are other people, why haven't other towns done it about, is it prohibitive that contractors will, you know, not come to New Milford to do work because it's, I mean, has there been any thought on? The three lawyers I talked prohibitive. to said, that's a good idea, <laughs> but right. nobody, but lawyers, that's kind of, right. but lawyers, that's kind of a lay person to say. But I think what Randy said is people didn't have the issue we had with the high school. Right. Yeah, that was a motivating factor that made us able to get this done. Us, but it just right. hasn't come to top of mind. And, you know, which, makes yeah. sense, which makes sense after the high school, <coughs> but does it make sense for the whole town well, here's what to I'll be say. maybe no. losing good contractors okay. for coming to do work? Here's what like I'll tell you about that. <coughs> contractors would have been happy to have something like this. No contractor wants this type of failure, if you will, of their system to happen. Because then you definitely won't, whether you want to work in a town or not, you're not going to be wanted in that town. So I think it's, you know, because we're a town and not a city, in Stanford, Danbury, does Danbury have this? No, Stanford does. Yeah, but Stanford does, yeah, and New Haven and, and obviously more urban areas. So I should I, say, I, no, I don't know if Danbury has it. I know Stanford does. Yeah, yeah. And uh, for those that don't know, Stanford was one of the fastest growing cities mm -hmm. in the United States. Also, uh, one of the most uh, uh, chosen to bring a business uh, to Stanford, also to live in Stanford. So I would think if there was a hot ordinance that would somehow uh, uh, make that less of a place to want to be or to invest, I'm sure they would have heard about it. Um, all we're trying to do is protect our citizenry protect the assets. I right. myself would defer to our fire marshal who actually asked that we put a hot ordinance in right. uh, and use his experience as he is our fire marshal and I would go by the recommendations of the fire marshal. And, and just to put everybody at ease, the online permit process, if you were to come to put a building in, you would have a process to go through to, for our office, the building department, mm -hmm. Inland Wetland, everybody, all the offices. Mm -hmm. We will put right in there and the question, are you going to be doing any hot work? They have to answer that before a permit is even generated. So everybody that puts in, that's going to build in town or demolish in town, whatever, they're going to have to see that. And they're going to have to answer yes or no. And lastly, if we're looking at big projects, right? So big projects take more than just a contract. They take an engineer mm -hmm. and an architect. <clears throat> and when you're doing the plans and specifications of those jobs, you're going to know whether you need to do hot work or not as the person that is working, the, the developer or the contractor, you're gonna decide for yourself, am I gonna bid on this project? I'm not gonna bid on this project because you have the expertise in all these fields. Right. So, uh, and the bigger uh, developers, those that, are, that would really equivocate to something like needing a hot, uh, a hot <coughs> uh, permit, those are gonna be more than likely, Kevin, am I correct? The larger developers, the larger construction and they right. do this all the time, time. they're well versed right. Right. having a hot work permit or not is not going to make them not take a job i don't think so or either. not especially when they're millions of dollars right 
I don't think a $50 permit and having to jump through some hoops is going to deter them from right. doing the job. Do you think we'll hear from some of these companies at the town meeting? There's Maybe. It's possible, but if you look at it from the other side of it, if you're the contractor, you want work. You want The contractor on the high school, he didn't want what happened to happen. He didn't, they actually were told they shouldn't be doing it. So he wouldn't have backed away for any reason. He I'm, also would have had a fire watch. He did. He did. Oh, that's great. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, you can't prevent all things. I'm just saying is, I understand the point you're trying to make. Is it, is it going to turn people away? I, I don't think so. As you just said, I mean, these, these are, this is termed for people, not for the guy who's going to build two houses on a lot that he owns. This is for the guy who's going to do multiple non-residential usually right. but that everyone will know about it who in their right mind would want to work where something could catch on fire i mean you know it's it's a it's a standard actually the hot right i, think I mean we a, learned that from the contractor if you were a qualified builder you would want this here so yeah. you wouldn't have people that are non-qualified doing the work so if i was a builder right. in town i would i would welcome this to make sure that sure. the safety is so you wouldn't have somebody coming in that wasn't qualified doing Right. Shabby work. So yeah. I would I would welcome this I if I was a contractor. One hundred percent. Right. I, I think okay. companies yeah. should be yeah. happy. Well, that's right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and, yeah. I, I do. So but you never know, Alex. Maybe somebody will come up and say, "Gee, I'd love to work in your town, but you have this ordinance, so I'm not going to." Yeah. Right. So, right. so if there's a, a multi-family unit being proposed, it's not when add that, that you discussion. are going to add yeah. that yeah. so this is not family. the final wording no no that's what i'm asking before i send it to the town clerk for filing to hold in her office pending the public hearing because it has to it has to be in that office right so people can review it <clears throat> i'll make any changes tomorrow and get it over to her directly and one of them would be uh non non non-residential projects except those that are large multifamily projects in the discretion of the fire marshal yeah, I think as long as they have some standard, then we can we can do that. Yes, I think the discretion right. of the fire marshal, yeah, but you really also great. have you really also great. have other people involved, as Kevin as you said. You know, there's the building committee, there's the commissions, there's this and that, and that's what the at the DST meetings where people discuss just what is the scope of a project? Is it really large enough? Maybe it's got a new term that we are not even thinking about here. Yeah. But really if it's too. part of that criteria that people hear about and know about when they take that first step to come here before they've done anything, then at least it's out on the table. Right. Or is it going to be a, a large commercial project like a condominium project that is stick frame, doesn't have hot work? Yes. Right. A, lot, a, a lot of them are that way. Yeah. yeah. So it doesn't mean, right. if there's rolled roofing or, right. or raised But again, you still want people emissions. to know about it. Right. You still, because you never know, you hire Absolutely. Joe Blow, the roof guy, and this is his first job, and then he says, oh, let's do the hot work on here. Quicker. I guess, Randy, you could put non single family, right? As opposed to yeah, non single. Yeah. So, well, sing, multi -family. Multi -family. so any, yeah, so anything above single. Yeah. Put, in his discretion, it's got to be, you know, it's got to be reasonable. Right. Right. The discretion is going to cover a lot. Yeah. So, and, and, and if you use the terms that this court has agreed upon or authorized for discretionary, then you should be fine. Yeah. It's got to be an expert's discretion, not mine. Right. His. That's where he comes in. Good. Okay, I'm good with it. We'll see. Mm -hmm. So those are the only changes you want me to draft into it? Anybody have any changes or questions for Randy or for the fire marshal? No. <clears throat> I just I just wanted to say I'm going to be voting against it only because I just received it tonight. I, I concur with your expertise and I would also you didn't say, have but I just got it tonight and I would also like to sort of explore other avenues, other possible repercussions that we haven't, you know, that we just haven't had time. So that's the only reason. A possible yeah. repercussion for something that's a safety factor and keeps things from burning apart. I, I don't understand. We'll go up to a town vote and then yeah, the, exactly. the, the town will decide. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, no, the town council votes on it. No, I meant to the town meeting. That's a, that's a public hearing. Right. Public. Town council votes on the right. ordinance. Right. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Any abstentions? I'll make Thank those you. changes tomorrow. So Thank you, Randy. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, I'd like to move that we set a date for a public hearing concerning the hot work ordinance. Uh, suggested date would be November 14th at 645. That's our first meeting in November. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you.
Okay, item 8C. Um, move for discussion and possible action on the cannabis use on town property. And this was actually. Sorry, is there a second? Second. This was actually approved uh, months ago uh, that we uh, yes. prohibit the vaping or smoking of <coughs> cannabis on town property. And then uh, I had. Uh, December. Yep, in December. Or uh, November. But this was never uh, brought more forward um, in the actual defining of bringing in the definitions. And then also having to have a um, public hearing on the prohibitive use of cannabis on town property. So that's why we're talking about this uh, tonight. Um, Randy, can you talk a little bit about the um, definition and the prohibition? Sure. It's, it's the definition is statutory. And the prohibition is simply the use of it on town property. There's nothing remarkable about it. It's a very basic ordinance who's as requested. You should know the legislature has modified the, uh, the consideration of banning cannabis townwide. They passed a, a, a public act July of, of 2022, and that states that you can actually have a vote or have a determination to ban it by ordinance mm -hmm. townwide. Or you can do it by zoning regulation, which I do not recommend. But, um, but it used to be that you had to have it at the reg next regular election, which is in November. Mm -hmm. Many towns objected to that. CCM objected to that, so the legislature ad adopted a modification that says you can do it either by ordinance, by that vote process, right. or by 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 uh, zoning regulation. So that's something that that I thought I should bring to the town council's attention and, because it's new. And for the council's edification, tonight we're only concentrating on town property. Right. We'll be bringing up uh, cannabis use uh, recreationally at the next town council meeting because things are changing, as Randy talked about. A lot has changed since we talked about it before. Right. One example was we talked about the fact that population would require how many uh, recreational dispensaries we have. That's now changed. It can be 100 if you want. That's changed. There's a whole bunch of different ones that Randy, I've asked Randy to kind of bullet point for us prior to the next meeting so that we can talk more about it. Uh, the cannabis use on town property, the reason why uh, 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 I had asked to bring this back up uh, is concerning uh, the prohibitive use, is town property is for everyone. Town property, no matter your age, no matter your sex, no matter your age, religion, what you look like, we're all the same on town property. Cannabis use, can either be done by smoking, vaping, or eating by candy. Most of us should know that if you smoke, you are going to exhale the smoke. Well, that smoke could get into a kid's lungs. That smoke could get into somebody that has emphysema's lungs. So, to me, I think the proper use and the safe use is that on all town property, we do not allow that use for that simple reason being that we need to be fair to everyone. And that includes our kids. Prime example, lots and lots of events we have on the town green, you know? Uh, that could be a problem. I've had some people ask and opine, well, Pete, what about alcohol? We're allowing alcohol on the green. With well, a permit. With a permit, absolutely. Well, here's the thing. When you're drinking, you're drinking for yourself. <laughs> Okay, you're not drinking for the kid that may uh, get smoke in their lungs and may get a little high because of that. So there is a big difference between alcohol consumption and cannabis use. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I so. have a question for Randy. Sure, Katie. Um, how does this r relate to or conform with or look like, we have an ordinance for cigarette smoking on town property. Mm -hmm. Right? We do, mm -hmm. right, if I recall yeah. correctly. Okay. And how does this follow along in that vein? It's consistent with it, but also, frankly, if, if it wasn't for vaping, you could use a smoking ordinance to say that you can't well, that's, smoke uh, on, yeah, on okay. property. So it's, it's consistent vaping. plus, right. I'll right. say. Okay. Anybody? And, okay. Well, you brought up the fact that you can 
smoke it or eat it. Uh, we're not saying anything here. We're talking only about smoking. To Alex's point, we can't enforce eating gum. Yeah, yeah, right, right. right. I just, I it. just want to bring it up out loud so that it's everybody oh, okay. hears that you know. So do we have to change our smoking ordinance? No, we don't. You know, it's it's consistent with it. The baking reason, cigarettes. The reason, well, actually, we can consider that smoking, really. Right. Now, we could change the smoking ordinance. I don't think it's necessary. And I, I really didn't think it was necessary for this. But because it's, because, because smoking, it's, smoking, regardless of what you're smoking. Kind of, yeah. Tobacco or right. marijuana, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, the chief, the chief has seen this, by yes. the way. But that was back when I, when I prepared it, like a year ago. Don't you think that, I, I realize what you're saying is that it's the same, but adding, having a separate one because there are people who will want to. Argue the point. Well, exactly. Mm -hmm. And you know, you don't want man on the street, police on the street, or whomever to be the person to start getting into some discussion. Well, that's a policy issue. That's your issue, yeah. Yes, yeah. right. No, I'm just saying to them, I, I, I think the same thing, that yeah. why don't we just put it under smoking, but it's not. Not now, someday, maybe nobody will care, but I think it's important to name it, just personally. Any other discussion? So the pop, town pop is considered a parking lot, right? And in high schools and stuff, that would be a oh, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. it, our schools, although they're under the complete control of the Board of Education, mm -hmm. are owned by the town of New Milford. We, we litigated that with the state of Connecticut mm -hmm. about 10 years ago. I just want to make sure. And yes. what? <laughs> yes, we did. Thank you. So where do the smokers go? <clears throat> What's their problem? Fumble and bomb. No. <laughs> no, they walk away. This is where they go. Yeah, mean to, not for not recreational no cannabis? No, no I mean, she's saying cigarettes. for a cigarette. Oh. If I'm a teacher, how far away uh, do teachers I have to don't be? smoke? But mm, right. How, if if I'm a child that goes to high school and I want to have a cigarette, how far away from the school do I go? Cumberland Farms is I know a lot from there. Larson at Larson Road. Larson Road, yeah, off the property. Off the property. Off the property. Yeah. So you can't go up to yeah. the track. You got to go. That's if you're employed at Kramer and Anderson, you got to get off the property. I noticed that the other day. Right. Well, so that's I noticed choice. that. That's right. awesome out that's there. Their choice. That's right. Oh, right. Well, there you have it. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. I'm going to abstain from this one. Okay. Thank you, everyone. All right. Item 8D, I'd like to move that we set a public hearing date on the prohibitive use of cannabis on town property. And I would suggest, again, our next council meeting, November 14th at 6.30 p.m. Second. 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 Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Extension. Extension. Yeah. Thank I you. I what you meant. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 8C. Before we do that, okay. uh, Randy, um, for the next town council meeting, we talk a little bit more about uh, recreational cannabis use I will. as the town. And I'll, I'll, I'll try to get information as to how many towns have done it. I know many have done it prior to the authorization to do it, but, uh, but I'll get that information to you. And Randy, could you get it to us like say Thursday before? Right. Oh, yes. Yeah. Me, if you could, so that we can nope, push it out to the council. Monday, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Thank Brand, you. Randy, I just wanted to ask you a quick question. Um, you, oh gosh, just went out of my head what I was going to say. Oh, there was, we had a discussion with you about the towns that were doing a moratorium. Mm -hmm. Has that increased, decreased status quo? It's actually decreased. The, the amount of towns that are banning it are not doing moratoriums. They're outright banning it. Banning is becoming more popular. Yeah, but again, popular and not, I know. not even half. Yeah. But, right. uh, but my point is simply that there was what, what the Italians call a mishkambro, because <laughs> right. of the way that statute was right. drafted, right. the original statute, People didn't know what they could or couldn't do, in fairness. Yeah. I had seven towns that we represent. And half of them thought that they could just ban it. And they couldn't under that original statute. But other towns did anyway, found out that it wasn't legal, had right. to wait for the new legislation. It was awful. It wasn't good, given good guidance right. by the legislature. There's never a provision for a moratorium. Never was. Right. But, so. but that's what they did, and the legislature has winked and nodded. Yeah, so if, it, if, you, if you're in a moratorium, you just stay in there. Yeah, that's what's happening. Gotcha. Right. Huh. Can you spell that word, Andy? Do no time. <laughs> moratorium? <laughs> no. Mora and then torium. No, the Oh, Ms. Camaro, am I It's late, you know. It's a good one. Ms. That's what it sounds like. Okay, so you, you didn't want to do... Uh, 
you said wait we already economic development yep okay real quick uh, update um, we continue with the economic development corporation with the pop-up New Milford startup program um, and uh, thank you to Oli Carr and to Tony Vengrove they continue to uh, try and see about additional businesses to start up their uh, where they're looking to actually start this up is the old golf uh, store that's golf on Main Green. Street. So thank you to Gary Goldring for uh, helping assist with that. And we'll have more information as the uh, project continues. Our Economic Development Con uh, Commission, uh, Frank Wargo is the chair of that, continues with our developer's guide. That's the guide that we're gonna be building that'll both be electronic and via print. Uh, that we'll be giving to developers that give them all sorts of insight into the town as well as stakeholders whether they be federal state or local uh, as well as some of the uh, uh, properties that are for sale uh, commercially as well <coughs> and uh, we're working on that hopefully in another couple of months we'll have that uh, up and running projects that are currently uh, on the in the works in New Milford well-built industries which is on still river they're beginning to put up the steel there if you've seen that uh, Garrity Pump will be breaking ground in the spring. Uh, the masonry uh, headquarters that will be on Still River right next to Save a Tree. They've broken ground, continue to do some of the groundwork there. Brucey Landscaping is putting their headquarters at Pickett District. F&M Excavation uh, has <coughs> done steel work there too. Done a pretty good job. That's also on Pickett District. And uh, Staples Plaza is uh, the gym. You may see some work that gets done and they kind of stop and start and stop. And that's from a regional uh, uh, gym. And they're also going to have, from what I understand, uh, a beauty salon in there, nails, mm -hmm. and whatnot there. In Litchfield Crossings, they're uh, putting up the uh, building for daycare center that will be there. Uh, next to Housatonic River Brewing, the uh, storage facility, they've broken ground there. I heard they're going to be doing uh, most of the work starting in the spring. Um, in back of Advanced Auto, there's another storage uh, facility that will be uh, worked on that was approved by zoning, and I heard they're going to start that in the spring. Uh, Eastern Connector, which is Mike Nahum's old, uh, business, mm -hmm. he's moving to the northern part of Route 7, uh, and uh, they started to get to some of the groundwork there as well. Roger Sherman Commercial Park on Route 7 North, they started that uh, work uh, there, and they've got the sign there. In back of Johanna's restaurant, uh, they're going to be putting a 60-seat banquet facility in there. They've been working uh, on that, um, getting some of the finalizations there. We also have the Lanesville Affordable Housing Project. Uh, that continues. Um, uh, they're doing some of the uh, uh, finishes uh, in that one. I believe that's 28 or 37 units. Boardman Affordable Housing Units, that's 17. They're continuing with the project there. And speaking with uh, Bill Murphy and Laura Regan, uh, still seeing strong growth in the application and permit processes. I thought we may have seen a little downturn with the interest rates, but with the pipeline as robust as it was prior to, they're still working through uh, those uh, uh, deals, mm -hmm. so to speak. And that's what I got. Thank you, Mayor. That's good. Um, I'd like to move that the Town Council go into executive session to discuss pending litigation and invite attorneys Tower and Debella into session with us. Second. And, and Jackie. Do you say Jack? Jack. Uh, Jack. I don't see Jack on here, but yes, there Jack you are. Please? Now I see Jack, but yes. And uh, Jack Healy, please. <coughs> a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you.
Okay. Uh, like to move to uh, return to regular session and note that there were no motions made and no votes taken. Second. Sal? Motion to adjourn. Second. Cheers, everybody. Did you actually vote on that motion? Yeah. Come back in executive session. Pardon? Did you vote on that motion to come back in executive session? Yeah, everybody has to vote. Yeah. All those yeah. in Aye. favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? No, no abstentions. Sal? Cheers, everybody. All right. Motion Sal made a motion. Do I have a second? second? Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Randy.